hello. In this video, uh, we're going to continue our study of inverse trigonometric functions. We're going to take a look at the definition of the inverse tangent function, then derive its derivative, and then take a look at an example incorporating that inverse tangent function with some of the earlier differentiation rules. We take a look at the graph of the tangent function, as we see down here. We see that it does not satisfy the horizontal line test. Again, all these horizontal lines intersect the graph in several points, in fact, infinitely many, as this dark piece of the graph keeps repeating. So as we did with the uh, cosine, inverse cosine function in the previous graph, we want to save a piece of the graph that first of all passes the horizontal line test, and secondly contains the entire range of the function, which is all real numbers y. The tangent can take on any values between minus infinity and infinity. So again, there's lots of choices, but we're going to save the dark piece, the one we've outlined here. That's the one that we have, uh, that mathematicians and scientists have agreed upon. So we're going to save the piece of the tangent. It's defined for x is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And, of course, this is between the vertical asymptotes. The tangent isn't defined at those endpoints. We have vertical asymptotes of minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. So we divide the inverse tangent function in regard to this piece of the graph. So for real number b, we want to think about how can we get an output of b for the tangent. Well, we're going to Again, think about the graph. We would move over to the piece of the graph we're saving, and then down or up to the x-axis. And there is the thing that gives us a tangent value of b, that a value. So for real number b, inverse tangent of b is going to be a, where first of all, a is between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And finally, the tangent of a is equal to b. And of course, we can find the graph of the inverse tangent by reflecting the piece of the tangent graph we're saving about the line y equals x. We've done that in the illustration over here. So the red graph is the graph of the inverse tangent function. And now we can see how working backwards on the original tangent graph is equivalent to putting b into the inverse tangent function and getting out the value a. Again, these points a and b are symmetric about the line y equals x also. So remember that a uh, piece of the tangent graph we're using has vertical asymptotes at x equals minus pi over 2 and x equals pi over 2. Uh, in reflection about y equals x, these vertical asymptotes become horizontal asymptotes. So we see those here. So here's the vertical asymptote, x equals minus pi over 2. And on reflection, it gives us this horizontal asymptote. And then likewise, the asymptote on the right reflects to the upper one. So the uh, graph of y equals inverse tangent of x has two horizontal asymptotes, one at uh, y equals pi over 2 and the other at y equals minus pi over 2. Now we saw that horizontal asymptotes are uh, verified or found by means of taking limits at infinity. And so if we change these into the analytic information, these horizontal asymptotes tell us the following, that if we take the limit as x goes to infinity, so take a large x out here, then the inverse tangent values, these red the, the red y values here are getting close to the horizontal asymptote, that is, they're approaching pi over 2. And likewise, if we go off to minus infinity, in other words, think about large negative values, then the inverse tangent approaches minus pi over 2. So these two limiting relations are useful to keep in mind. And of course, if you're familiar with the graph, it's pretty easy to uh, come up with those limit relations. We can find the derivative of the inverse tangent function by taking the tangent of both sides of the equation, y equals inverse tangent of x, and then doing an implicit differentiation on each side. 
So this is very much like we did for the inverse cosine function in the uh, inverse cosine video. So from y equals tangent inverse of x, we take the tangent of both sides, and this gives us tangent y on the left, and tangent of tangent inverse of x on the right. And of course, as we've done before, composing a function with its inverse, they kind of undo each other, and we get back the original input of x there. Remember the tang inverse tangent function has domain minus infinity to infinity. You can take any input there, and so this is going to be true for all real numbers x. And as before, we then differentiate both sides of this relationship with respect to x. And again, we're thinking of y as a function of x, so you might want to think of y as tangent y as tangent of y of x. So when you do this derivative, we get the derivative of tangent y with respect to x equals the derivative of x. So just putting a d dx on both sides of that upper equation. We use the chain rule to do this tangent derivative. The derivative of tangent is secant squared, so we get secant squared y. And then by the chain rule, the derivative of what we've taken the tangent of, which is gives us the derivative of y or dy dx. And again, our goal, of course, is to find dy dx because y was the inverse tangent function. So if we can find that derivative, we'll have the derivative of the inverse tangent function. As before, it's a matter of just a little algebra and a trig identity. So we're going to find dy dx, solve for it by dividing both sides by secant squared y, and then using the well-known identity that secant squared y is 1 plus tangent squared of y. That should have been. So let's see how, what that looks like. So we have dy dx then given by 1 over secant squared y. And secant squared y is 1 plus tangent squared y. And then as we saw earlier up here in this line, the tangent of y is equal to x. And so this gets us back to a derivative uh, in terms of x. So our inverse tangent derivative, or derivative of tangent inverse prime, say, is given by 1 over 1 plus x squared. Take a look at one quick example after we take a look at the chain rule. Uh, the chain rule version of this derivative result is this. It says if we take the derivative of the inverse tangent of a function u of x, we get the following. Chain rule says differentiate the outer function first, which is the inverse tangent function. This is going to give us a 1 over 1 plus u squared, and then times the derivative of what was inside the inverse tangent function for u prime of x over 1 plus u of x squared. Okay, so we'll conclude with an example using the derivative of the inverse tangent function. So let's find dy dx if y is equal to the square root of 1 plus the logarithm of the inverse tangent of x squared. So this is a pretty complicated looking structure. There are a lot of propositions involved here. So let's uh, kind of talk through this. So what do we do when we want to calculate the value of this function for a given x? So we first calculate x squared. It's documented there. We then put this result into the inverse tangent. That's one of our compositions, the x squared function composed of the inverse tangent. We then take the natural logarithm and add 1. So we've composed the inverse tangent of x squared with the function 1 plus log x. And then the last composition, we put all that into the square root function. So we can write a composition chain for this, kind of document this work. And uh, we'll write it from top to bottom with the outside, the last thing we do listed first. So we're going to think of this as y equals the square root of, a, of some expression u. And so we can write y equals root u or u to the 1 half. Now again, looking through our description up here, we can think of u as 1 plus the log of, say, v. v, we're going to think of as the inverse tangent of some expression w. And then finally, w equals x squared. 
And so the way these chains work, recall, is that if we start with an X in the bottom and then work our way up the list, by the time we've computed Y, we have computed the value of the function for X. Of course, this shows the composition. This expression is really a composition of some simple functions, all of which we know how to differentiate. So applying the chain rule to this composition chain, we can know we can find dy dx by doing the derivative of each line in this chain. So the first one, y is expressed as u to the one half, so we start with dy du, next in line du dv, then dv dw, then dw dx, all simple derivatives. Let's compute each of these derivatives. So uh, the u to the one-half for dy du becomes one-half u to the minus one-half. The logarithm function we saw earlier, log of v different with respect to v becomes one over v. Of course, the one differentiates to zero. We have the uh, v equals inverse tangent w. As we just saw, that derivative turns out to be one plus one over one plus w squared. And then finally, the derivative of w or x squared comes out to be 2x. Now to finish this, we just have to return this expression to the original variable x by doing some substitution. And again, all that is based on these formulas here that express the various variables in terms of other variables. So uh, start back here. We have 1 plus w squared, and the w is x squared. And so if we replace w by x squared, we find 1 over 1 plus x squared squared. For the 1 over v, well, v was the inverse tangent of w. And again, w is x squared. So the 1 over v is now showing up here. And then for the 1 half u to the minus 1 half, we have, that's 1 half 1 over the square root of u. And inside the square root, we have 1 plus log of v. And as we just saw, log of v is inverse tangent of x squared. Not a lot we can do to simplify this, but that's what we've done in the next line. We've done the multiplications. The twos cancel. Gives us x in the numerator. And we've just grouped together the things in the denominator and uh, rewritten the x squared squared as x to the fourth right down here. So again, a pretty complicated expression, but uh, once we pull it apart with the chain, we'll see the simple elements really not too bad. Again, mastering this just takes practice, working the my math lab problems and the supplementary problems you see up on Blackboard. See you in the next video.